Now to an ABC Action News exclusive. A look at Florida's water pollution crisis from an angle you've never seen. Everyone plays part, and right now scientists tell us our ecosystems are failing and are pushed to the brink. ABC Action News reporter Micah Paluska takes us out on the water to try and get perspective on where our politicians are failing, where citizens are failing, and why the wheels of government need to speed up before it's too late. Every charter boat captain we talked to, scientist and politician told us we are all to blame for Florida's water pollution crisis. No one is innocent, but we are at a moment in time right now where we can't fail to act. We can't just keep cleaning up tons of dead fish, nearly a thousand dead manatees, and then wait for it to happen all over again. What's happening is not natural. This is caused by man. It's being supercharged by man. Red tide is a natural occurrence, but the nutrients that we are putting in the water causing these catastrophes are not. And that's what's supercharging this monster. Every different spot has their boogeyman, so to speak. Failing septic systems, outdated sewage treatment plants, stormwater runoff, way too many fertilizers on lawns. Those are our biggest issues here. We are still running Florida based on a 1960s version of how we should manage water. It's not about science. I'm a scientist here telling you we don't need more science to tell us what the problem is. It's all a political will problem. And until it becomes a priority, we're not going to fix it. It almost makes you wonder about what's going to be there in the future. What have you been dealing with? You've been shut down for seven weeks? I don't know when we're going to get back on track for, for taking people uh, fishing. Is that a big hit for you financially? Oh, yeah. On a cloudy and calm morning, Captain Luke Bonner volunteered to ferry us into the shallows of Bishop Harbor near Port Manatee and the recent Piney Point spill to meet up with scientists from the Tampa Bay Estuary Program. They're studying the impacts from the 215 million gallons of polluted water released into the estuary. They let it sit there as a time bomb. 205 tons of nitrogen gushing into Lower Tampa Bay in just 10 days. It's, you know, 10 times worse than what we would see in regular wastewater from our wastewater treatment plants. Maya Burke, the assistant director of the Tampa Bay Estuary Program, says the spill is equivalent to about a year's worth of pollution going into Lower Tampa Bay, waste that flows unimpeded from multiple sources, whether it be raw sewage from spills, fertilizers from agricultural and residential runoff, failing septic tanks, or toxic vehicle emissions like NOx, nitrogen oxides. Red Tide, Karenia brevis, it's a pretty opportunistic feeder. It's not picky, and it can make use of a variety of different nutrients that are available. But there are other algae species that are blooming in the bay too, and generally what drives that productivity is nitrogen, so that's why we worry about it. Burke's team hit about 10 sites around Piney Point, waterways historically healthy with stable seagrass beds that they would only visit about once a year. Now they go twice a week, collecting as much data as they can. 13, 13, and 16. So the water's pretty murky here, so when he dives under to check the grass for algaes and everything they're searching for, he has to do it all by touch because he really can't see anything that's going on in the water column. 
Burke says it's still too soon to know the exact impact, but they are worried and feverishly working to restore other parts of the bay in decline, like the Feather Sound area near St. Pete Clearwater International Airport. So we're trying to get the community to really rally around those necessary actions and investments so that we can stop Old Tampa Bay from becoming the next Indian River Lagoon. This right here is the kind of stuff that the people in power do not want you to see. Frustrated and fed up, Captain Tyler Capella posted horrific images and videos in real time, updating his 15,000 plus Instagram followers. <laughs> calling out everyone, especially our local leaders and politicians to act. Everyone wants their beautiful seawall and their nicely manicured yard up to the water, fertilizer, well guess what? That is also contributing and that's every single person in the Tampa Bay area. For years, our politicians have just kicked the can down the road, knowing there's a problem and not doing anything about it. Well, guess what? The road is about to end. It's like we're, uh, we're just cleaning up a mess instead of preventing it, right? Like uh, a hundred, hundred percent. Yeah, if they would have, you know, dealt with Piney Point or they stopped the nutrients from going in, you don't have to clean up the dead fish anymore. The consensus among all of the scientists we interviewed is that the nitrogen loads from Piney Point likely supercharged the bloom, bringing the highest concentrations they've ever seen deep into Tampa Bay. It's just somewhere the science along the chain gets spun to say, well, the research is ongoing. We still don't know what causes the red tide. You know, we're not really sure what's happening, it's a naturally occurring thing, and then they sweep it under the rug, everyone forgets about it, and then we have another one two years later. And I'm sure that each polluter says that they're not polluting as much as the other yeah, person. Yeah, it's like this, right? You point fingers. Haley Bush is the outreach director for A Thousand Friends of Florida, a nonprofit using science to drive policy, a watchdog group against urban sprawl. She's the newest generation fighting to protect our waterways, and in the past three years since she started, she's learned some tough lessons. When you've seen this stuff, just how difficult has it been emotionally for you? Is it fair to say over the past three years, you are now tired and more frustrated and slightly less optimistic than yeah, when you started? Yeah, that's fair. The momentum and the emotion behind it is just, is let's get it done, let's just go after it, an omnibus bill, but the reality of Florida policy and legislation, that the whole process is when a bill like that goes through session, all the different interests significantly weaken it. So that's been my biggest shift in thought. Bush saw red tide devastating her own backyard in Pinellas County, helpless to do anything about it. Her drive to change policy now even stronger. It's such a David and Goliath issue. And unfortunately, I think the burden of that falls on citizens, you know, average people who have to take time out of their day to go you know, talk to their legislators, talk to their local officials. Everyone realizes it, but thus far, there's not the political will to forcefully push it. And so that's where the governor, who again is already you know, starting to push this, could push even more. Navigating the polluted waters of the Indian River Lagoon with Aaron Adams, the Director of Science and Conservation for Bonefish and Tarpon Trust, felt overwhelming. But in the face of a slow-moving environmental catastrophe, Adams was stoic. We have to fix many decades of bad behavior, but... It seems impossible. It's not at all impossible, and that's the thing. When we talk about this, people start to get kind of depressed and, oh, it's too big, but it's not. Then we saw dolphins, manatees, and birds hunting in what's now considered a failing ecosystem, still full of brown tide, 70% of its seagrass gone. I wondered, was this a sign of hope or the lone survivors still fighting to survive? This is not gonna do it for manatees, no. Nearly a thousand manatees dead this year, most starving to death right here in this lagoon. But if we don't fix it, Florida's future, I think, is, is pretty dim. But we have to realize that if we don't get started now, we will get to the point at some level where it's too late to fix it. And the problem from a scientific perspective is we won't know when we've hit that point until we're past it. In Tampa, with photographer Reed Moeller, Michael Paluska, ABC Action News.